Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll have a musical performance from Hardwood Groove. But first, joining me now uh, was a busy man in November, uh, Secretary of State of North Dakota, Al Yeager. Uh, Al, thanks for joining us today. Well, it's good to be here. Uh, first off, uh, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and your background, where you're originally from. Well, originally I uh, was born and raised in Beulah, North Dakota. Uh, went to school there, went to Bismarck State College after that, and then received my Bachelor of Science degree from Dickinson State University. Was a high school teacher for five years, shortly worked in, uh, with a major oil company, and then I became a real estate broker for 20 years, and in 1992 I ran for Secretary of State, and I've been blessed by the people in North Dakota who have elected me seven times, and this is my 24th year. 24th year, what, what got you interested or made you want to become Secretary of State? Well, it really wasn't for any political reasons. It was because I was taking a look at what I felt that I'd do well, and it seemed that the duties of the Secretary of State matched up well with what I think I do well. And so I decided to run for Secretary of State. And, and what I thought at that time has proven to be the case for 24 years. I, I, I like the work. I, I like what uh, the office does. I know the importance of it. I'm a detail type person. And uh, I, it matches up well. So it wasn't really for any political aspirations. It was because I felt I could bring something to state government that matched well with what I think I do well. Okay. Well, as we're taping this, and of course, uh, it's just, the election's just over, just a few days ago, but how did things go on November the 8th here in the state? It went very well. You know, we really haven't had any reports of, of any, you know, obstacles. Uh, the, the process went well. And our goal all the time has been for many years that we want the news the day after the election to be about the results and not about, you know, the voting process. Now, we did have uh, three counties where they did experience some long lines, and that's, uh, that's something that is uh, handled by the county level. It's not something that's directed by the state. And so, but I think it's also because uh, the voter turnout. Uh, we had a record voter turnout. We had, uh, it appears that when the final numbers are in, we're going to be at about uh, 349,000, give or take a few. And that's the most that have ever voted in the state of North Dakota. The turnout was 61 percent. It was the same four years ago. And, and the question might be, well, if more people turned out, why is the percentage the same? Well, it's because we have more eligible voters this year than we did four years ago. And so the percentage is, is calculated against uh, eligible voters, which the, we, we get that number from the state data center. Uh, we don't have voter registration, and so that's what we base our turnout on. Yeah, and of course, do presidential years uh, tend to have bigger turnout than in the off years? Yes, that's that's unfortunate. I I think every election is important, whether it's you know the June election. You know, we talk about the June election, and that doesn't have a very often a very big turnout, and uh, yet that's the election whereby. Uh, we vote for our, our city people, our city commissions. Uh, our, many school boards have their election on that day. Every election is, is important. So the turnout should be, you know, 349,000 for every election. Mm -hmm. uh, now, on the no <clears throat> November 8th election, uh, when will you actually certify the results? The, the results were certified on November 18th, and that's when the state canvassing board meets. Uh, uh, the Monday prior to that is when the county canvassing board meets. They, the 53 counties transmit those results uh, forward uh, to our, our office and then we certify them. And then uh, after that, uh, and, you know, we may or may not have a recount coming out of that particular election. Uh, uh, we'll know when, you know, you know, when that happens. Uh, but the thing that uh, also is, uh, comes out of that election is uh, there with the election of the president, you are voting for three electors. And so on December 19th, at one o'clock in the afternoon in the governor's conference room, the presidential electors from North Dakota cast their votes and uh, 
for the next president of the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, does your office only <clears throat> work on elections during the month of an election? <laughs> no. Uh, actually, uh, we have somebody working on elections pretty much every day of the year. And so really for, you know, the major election like what we have, uh, uh, you know, the planning goes back uh, quite a ways. Uh, you know, we, there are certain things that uh, counties have to decide on uh, at least a year before the election. And uh, there's training and, and all kinds of things that go into into uh, you know in, into the equation. And also, you know, in a in a you know short time, the legislature is going to be here. Uh, we also take a look at you know whatever election laws need to be uh, tweaked, uh, adjusted, or whatever based on anything that may have happened during the election. And so, uh, we we are busy all the time. Uh, Elections happen really every day in our office. Well, now, was it was uh, was there an issue? Did the Justice Department dis talk with North Dakota about our voter ID lo laws? Well, essentially, what happened during the during the summer uh, of 2016 is that uh, the state was sued uh, because of our voter identification laws, and, and out of that, uh, what uh, happened is a federal judge uh, did a temporary injunction that's required that we had to provide what what was termed a fail safe. And that meant that uh, in addition to the four forms of, of uh, identification uh, in law, that we had to provide uh, an option for people that did not have one of those four forms of identification. And that was a voter's affidavit. And on the voter's affidavit, the individual essentially says, you know, this is my name, this is, the, the, this is my birth date, this is where I reside. And they are swearing, too, that this a information is accurate. And uh, if it's subsequently found out that it isn't accurate, there is a penalty of uh, up to three thousand dollars or a year in jail, and we'll, and we'll, we will be taking a look at the affidavits to to see how that might you know has worked out and and uh, but that's where we are right okay. now with the federal. Yeah, because were there complaints in 2014 election uh, that some people were unable to vote? Maybe driver's license had the wrong address or something like that? Well, essentially what happened in, in uh, you know, the legislature made changes in 2013 and in 2015 in regarding voter, af uh, voter identification. And so that was the first election after, after 2013. And uh, there were still, even though we had a pretty good education campaign, there were still people that didn't have the required uh, identification. And so we did hear that some people got turned away. We don't have anything statistical to indicate how many actually were turned away. Okay. Now, I was asking about 2014. What about 2016 presidential? Did any uh, trouble at polling places, people being turned away at all? At, at this particular time, uh, you know, didn't hear anything about any people being turned away. Uh, if there was, I think it would have been very isolated in terms of maybe the circumstances of the situation. And, uh, but otherwise, uh, we really had a pretty good election. Uh, we really take a lot of uh, pride in how we conduct elections in North Dakota. Uh, we'll see how we turn out this time, but the Pew Charitable Trust has ranked uh, North Dakota uh, number one in the nation for four election cycles in terms of uh, election administration. And, we won't know how they rank us until probably sometime in 2017 or even later, but uh, we do have a lot of people that work very hard in making sure our elections go well. Well, you say that. To talk about that, uh, are the people that uh, help out uh, at polling, uh, staffing the polling places, are they volunteers or do they get paid and how much work goes into that? Well, the people that are in the election board on election day or, uh, you know, at different times, they are actually uh, paid. And uh, so in each election board needs at least five uh, people. Uh, so during the course of, of an election, we probably have around 2,500 people, give or take, on election day working. And so it's very intensive. They receive training. All of that is, again, information that originates out of our office, and, and then they're trained at the county level. And so uh, there's a lot of people involved, and, uh, you know, we're, I'm very grateful for, for what they do. Well, you know, there was some campaign talk this year about rigged elections. Uh, can, you, can you speak or comment ab about uh, the difficulty in uh, rigging votes or changing votes? 
Well, really in our system, it's, it's virtually impossible because when a person casts their, their ballot, it's put into a scanner. That scanner is not uh, connected with any, uh, any network at all. And then at the end of the evening, the results from that scanner are taken, transmitted to the county. Uh, then t through a, a secure network, it's transmitted to our, our, our office. And so there's really no place along that, that uh, process where it can be hacked. Uh, probably if I have uh, more concern is that, uh, and I don't consider this rigged in terms of changing it, you know, the results in the system, but that truly that the people who are voting are qualified North Dakota electors, and that's the important thing. Yeah. Uh, what's the process for somebody getting on the ballot in North Dakota? Well, it's, um, it, it depends uh, on, you know, what level, you know, is it a city position, is a school board position, is a county level, is a statewide wide. And uh, on a statewide level, uh, uh, if you are uh, identified with a political party, uh, you can either secure a uh, endorsement from the political party or you can run in that party's primary. And, uh, you know, a good example of that is, is uh, our current governor uh, who uh, did not receive the party's endorsement, but ran in the primary and then received the, the party uh, nomination in that particular manner. So that's an option. Uh, for others, uh, like an independent candidate, there's a provision in terms of, uh, of uh, circulating petition. Uh, whenever anybody is interested in running for office, we have pamphlets for, for every, uh, every level, you know, in terms of what you have to do. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised uh, within about another year we'll receive a letter from somebody uh, wanting to get on the ballot for the next presidential election. Uh, we, it seems like uh, you know, one election is over and, and they keep contacting our, our office. So there's, there's a lot of wannabe presidents in the United States that, that are out there. Okay. Well, what about early voting? That seemed to be talked about a lot. Uh, did, how did that go this year? Well, it, it was consistent with what it was for, uh, in other elections, and, and that's about a third of the ballots that uh, were cast were, were cast prior to Election Day. And so we had 31 counties that do vote by mail, and so that's how that works. And then there's absentee ballots, and then we have five or six uh, low, uh, cities or counties that have early voting centers, and, and those are open uh, a week to two weeks before the election. So uh, there was about approximately a third of the ballots that were cast before November 8th. Now, when you say vote by mail, does that mean it has to be there before November the 8th? Or? No, in North Dakota, uh, our, our cutoff is that it has to be postmarked the day prior to election. Okay. I know in some states the ballots have to arrive, you know, by election day, but I, that's always puzzled me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we have a system that is more appropriate okay. and, and works better. You know, do you personally get excited uh, for an election? I mean, you do so many of them and you're working constantly in it. it what, what is it like for you to think about another election? Well, actually, um, it, uh, I, I guess I don't really th think about it because it's one of my duties. And so it's just part of the process. We, you know, our goal is to make sure that everything I is right. It does get uh, a little bit uh, challenging when I happen to be the candidate and when I'm a candidate on the ballot at the same time we're working on elections, but you know we've managed through all of that. So I, I just think uh, elections are so important. Uh, you, you know, people need to participate. Or, you know, I, I hope they participate, and when they do participate, I hope that they do take some time to, to become knowledgeable about the issues. Well, I, I would agree with you. It, I always like to see a good turnout uh, on voting day. Uh, talk a little bit about what is the North Dakota Blue Book. The Blue Book is a publication really unlike any other, I think, in the state of North Dakota. Uh, it's really, uh, you know, information about North Dakota. It contains things that uh, you re really can't find readily in some other publications. And um, the history of it, it's, it was kind of sporadic in terms of publication. And in 1989, when the state had its uh, centennial, uh, there was a book and then published and then nothing happened and then when I was elected in uh, 1992 uh, we resurrected it and so uh, beginning in 1995 we have published a book uh, every other year 
And so uh, uh, the good news about all of that is a goal of mine for a long time was that uh, we have so much information and it should be available to students, but you know, we only have so many publications and, and the internet has made a big difference because all of those books uh, are now available for viewing on the internet. Uh, and uh, the wealth of information that's, that's in there uh, is really uh, extensive. And uh, what's unique about the book is we only have uh, a few people that are paid. Uh, the contributors have ranged between 60 and 70 contributors, and those contributors are volunteers. And, and their agencies or outside, whatever, they allow them to spend the time to, to create the, the book. And, uh, so uh, we really encourage people to go online and check out the North Dakota Blue Book. And with that, you say a lot of information, but you're not talking about all election information. No, no, it's about everything. I mean, we have a feature chapter, you know, or features each book. And so it's ranged from, uh, well, we had the state's 125th birthday featured. Uh, the, topic, the, to the main topic or the main feature changes each time. And uh, one, of, one of the tidbits that I, that I like, because we don't, we don't uh, repeat everything every time, but we do have an extensive in index. And my, my favorite example of that is earthquakes. Now, it doesn't mention earthquakes in, in every issue, but if you go to the index and look up earthquakes, you'll find which edition it was in, and you'll find out when there was an earthquake, uh, you know, south of uh, Bismarck, uh, and the state capitol shook a little bit. But we don't we don't repeat that every book. Okay. But so the index is so uh, so valuable. Okay. Well, you, we talked. We've been talking about elections so much for your office. What other areas does your office work on and deal with? Well, probably one of the most important is that we'd like to say business in North Dakota begins in the Secretary of State's office because virtually every business in North Dakota has a registration requirement uh, with my office, whether they be a corporation, limited liability company, partnerships, sole proprietorships, trade names, all of that. Uh, that, that all happens with my, my office. And so uh, that's a very important com component. Uh, I happen to license contractors. I commission notary publics. Uh, we maintain a uh, database uh, for the Uniform Commercial Code, which is the, the, the database when uh, a farmer goes and buys a combine or uh, you know, somebody buys a boat, there's a security document well, that becomes public record through my office. And we literally have thousands and thousands and thousands of, the, of those particular records. And uh, so, uh, I, you know, if I add it all up, I have around uh, 30 or, f or around 40 different areas that we are, that we are involved in in our office. And so uh, each day is a little bit different. Well, Al, with all the things you do, uh, do you have the, what's the best part of your job? Well, I don't know if uh, there is anything that's uh, the best part. Uh, it's just that the work that I do, uh, I enjoy. Uh, I get a lot of satisfaction out of many of the things that we've done in the office over the years. Uh, you know, when the Secretary of State does something, it, it doesn't normally make headlines. Well, we're out of time, but if people want more information, where can they go? Who can they oh, contact? Well, they can go to the Secretary of State's website. It's very complete. Uh, and, of course, that's changed, too, in, in the time office. <laughs> Uh, the internet didn't exist when I took office. <laughs> well, Al, we're out of time. Th thanks for joining us today. It's good to be here. Th Stay tuned for more. Hardwood Grew has strong roots in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Even their name derives from the dense forests that populate northwest Minnesota. Their music style ranges from bluegrass and folk to jazz and rock. Here's a look at their performance for the Prairie Public's music series, Prairie Musicians. Next thing I know, those leaves are falling on the frozen. 
frozen ground across Minnesota in a cold north wind covers me in snow again. Yeah, you never know and what you got might be gone and you can't say that your life will be long and you can't see too far ahead of me. Watching you shine underneath the stars when you looked at me. Held out those arms, you said, baby, I will not leave your side. Then there's your face in the morning light when you looked at me. You said goodbye to this day. Honey, I don't know why. Yeah, you never know when what you got might be gone And you can't say that your life will be long And you can't see too far ahead of me So take your time Live your life Cause like this song It's here and gone
Well, that's all we have on Prairie Post this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.